In this video, we will look at how to find the voltage across a capacitor in a first order RC circuit. Recall that a first order RC circuit is defined as a circuit consisting of only independent sources, resistors and a single capacitor. The voltage across the capacitor depends on whether we are solving for the natural response or the step response. The natural response is the currents and voltages resulting from a, the sudden disconnection of DC voltage source or DC current source, usually due to switching. Under natural response, the voltage across the capacitor has this generic form. The step response is the currents and voltages resulting from the sudden application of a DC voltage source or DC current source, usually due to switching. Under step response, the voltage across the capacitor has this generic form. The general steps to solve any first order RC or RL circuit are shown here. For an RC circuit, first we need to determine whether we are solving for the natural response or the step response. After that, we need to determine the parameters that make up the natural or the step response. In this example, we will be solving for the step response of a first order RC circuit. So let's see how these steps are applied in a systematic manner to solve the example. The first step is to determine whether we are solving for the natural or the step response. In this given circuit, the switch is at position A for a very long time and then moves to position B at times t equals to zero. We need to examine the circuit after switching takes place. If there is an independent source in the circuit after switching takes place, then we are solving for the step response. However, if there is no independent source in the circuit after switching takes place, then we are solving for the natural response. In this circuit, after switch, switching takes place, the switch is in position B and therefore this is the circuit of interest after switching has taken place. We can see that in this circuit there is this independent source. This means that we are solving for the step response of an RC circuit. Under step response, The voltage across the capacitor is given by this generic expression Vc infinity plus Vc zero plus minus Vc infinity multiplied by e raised to the power minus t over tau. Note that in order to decide whether we are solving for the natural or step response, we do not look at the circuit before switching takes place. This is because under both natural and step response, there will be an independent source in the circuit before switching takes place. Thus, we cannot use the circuit before switching takes place to decide whether we are solving for the step or the natural response. And the correct way is to look at the circuit after switching takes place and this helps us to correctly decide whether we are solving for the natural or the step response. In this particular example, we are going to solve for the step response. So the next step is to determine the parameters Vc infinity, Vc zero plus and tau that make up the step response. So let's see how this can be done. The next step is to find Vc0 minus. Recall that t is equal to 0 minus denotes the time just before switching takes place. Therefore, Vc0 minus is the voltage across the capacitor just before switching takes place. In the given circuit, the switch is at position A before switching takes place. Therefore, this part of the circuit is not connected. And this is the circuit of interest. It is given that the switch has been at position A for a very long time. 
We know that under steady state, a capacitor acts like an open circuit to DC. Therefore, we can determine Vc0 minus using the equivalent circuit at time t is equal to 0 minus as follows. We replace the capacitor with an open circuit and then consider uh, the rest of the circuit. So the voltage across the capacitor is Vc0 minus and this is the remainder of the circuit. We have a 40 volt source and two resistors which are forming a voltage divider. So we can use a voltage divider principle to find this voltage Vc0 minus. So Vc0 minus is the voltage across the 60 kilo ohm resistor and using the voltage divider principle this is 60k divided by 60k plus 20k multiplied by 40 and this comes out to be 30 volts. Now it is also a property of a capacitor that voltage across a capacitor cannot change instantaneously. Therefore Vc0 plus which is the voltage across the capacitor just after switching takes place. This is equal to Vc0 minus which is equal to 30 volts. The next step is to find tau. In order to do that we consider the circuit after switching has occurred which is shown here. Here we see that the capacitor is now connected to a network of resistors and also one independent source. In order to find tau we use the equivalent resistance concept. Thus we need to find the equivalent resistance that is seen by this capacitor. So this means that we need to find the equivalent resistance seen looking from the terminals where the capacitor is connected. So we need to find the equivalent resistance for this given circuit. Here we use the concept of Thevenin equivalent circuit technique to help us find this R equivalent. So we, since this circuit has one independent source only, we can replace the voltage source by a short circuit and then start combining the resistors from the far end back towards the input resistance. So when we replace the voltage source by a short circuit, our problem simplifies as follows. So we have 40k, 160k, 8k and this is the equivalent resistance. So we have 40k in parallel with 160k and then this is in series with the 8 kilo ohm resistance. Thus our equivalent is 8k plus 160k in parallel with 40k. And simplifying this expression gives the value of R equivalent as 40 kilo ohm. Thus the time constant tau is R equivalent times C and substituting the values this comes out to be 10 milliseconds. Thus we have found the time constant for this first order RC circuit. The next step is to find Vc infinity. Recall that T is equal to infinity denotes a time, a very long time after switching has occurred. Therefore Vc infinity denotes the voltage across the capacitor a long time after switching has occurred. When the switch has been in position B for a very long time, the capacitor will be under steady state and under steady state a capacitor acts as an open circuit to DC. 
Thus, we can replace the capacitor by an open circuit and the voltage across this capacitor is Vc infinity. And then we can use circuit analysis to find this value Vc infinity. So we have the 8 kilo ohm resistor, the 40 kilo ohm, 160 kilo ohm and 75 volts. So this circuit is the equivalent circuit at time t equals to infinity. We can use any circuit analysis technique to find this voltage Vc infinity. For instance, we can use the node voltage method. So we can ground this node. Since this branch is open, the voltage at this node is in fact Vc infinity. We can assume branch currents flowing away from the node and then apply Kirchhoff current law to this node. So this branch current through the 40 kilo ohm resistor is Vc infinity minus 75 volts. So this is because of the given polarity of this source divided by 40k plus this branch current is voltage at this side minus voltage at this side. So Vc infinity minus 0 over 160k and this is equal to 0. And this equation can be so solved to show that Vc infinity comes out minus 60 volts. Thus we have solved for the last parameter that makes up the step response. Now we can just substitute the values into this expression to get the expression for the voltage across the capacitor. So su substituting values, we have Vc infinity was minus 60 and Vc 0 plus was 30 and then Vc minus infinity was found to be minus 60 and e raised to the power minus t over tau and tau was find, found to be 10 milliseconds which is 0 0.01 and this expression can be simplified as follows. So this becomes e raised to the power minus 100 T. Thus the voltage across the capacitor is minus 60 plus 90 e raised to the power minus 100 T and this expression is valid for time T greater than or equal to 0. We can use the plot command in Mathematica to plot the expression for the voltage across the capacitor. The plot command has the following syntax where we, we wish to plot this expression up to 70 milliseconds. And the plot range, axis label and label style are different options to configure the way the plot looks. We can see that initially the voltage across the capacitor before switching occurs is 30 volts and then this becomes eventually equal to minus 60 volts. In this case the time constant is 10 milliseconds therefore 5 time constants is 50 milliseconds which is 0 0.05 seconds. Thus in this plot we can mark off the transient. So this is the transient part of the response where the response is changing. And this is the steady state part once the transient has died out. We can use PSPICE to verify our solution for the step response. This is the circuit after switching takes place and we have set the initial voltage across the capacitor to 30 volts. And when we simulate, this is the expression for the voltage across the capacitor. And we can go to trace, add trace. And here we can enter the expression that we have found which was minus 60 plus 90 multiplied by exponential minus 100 into time. 
So this time variable is pSpice internal vector representing the time. And when we click OK, we can see that the theoretical expression and the pSpice result match perfectly. So this confirms the solution. Once we solve for the voltage across the capacitor, now we can solve for any other desired voltage or current in the circuit. Suppose we are interested in finding this current I0 through the 8 kilo ohm resistor. This can be done using the voltage across, using the expression for the voltage across the capacitor. In this case, we note that the 8 kilo ohm resistor is in series with the capacitor. Thus, this current is the same as the current through the capacitor. We know that for a capacitor, the current and voltage are related as C D by D T V C T. Thus, we can plug the values here. So the capacitor is 0.25 micro and D by D T. We plug in the expression for the voltage across the capacitor and this comes to 0.25 micro and when we differentiate this we get minus 90 times 100 e raised to the power minus 100 t and this expression simplifies to minus 2.25 into 10 raised power minus 3 e raised to the power minus 100 t. We can use pSpice to reconfirm our solution. So we can delete this voltage marker and instead place a current marker. And now when we simulate, we obtain the expression for the current. So we can see that the current is initially minus 2.25 milliamps and then it exponentially decays to zero. And the time constant here is 10 milliseconds. So in about 50 milliseconds, the current has reached its steady state value. So this confirms the solution.